Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation, Rock and Roll Friday. Uh, music's great. Let's hear a little more party, though. When the chrome was thick and the women were straight, the America I love. So here we are, the end of another horrendous week, another maniac Another maniac went crazy and shot up a place, killed a young woman and another guy. Woman, man. Of course, they're hiding the fact that he had a rainbow flag in his house because then people might start ripping down rainbow flags and taking down, uh, I don't know, statues to generals of the rainbow movement. I don't know. They can disinter generals of the rainbow movement as they did with the uh, Confederate flag. But let's put that aside. Crazy time. Crazy time. There's Obama never missing an opportunity to stir up the masses of hate and stir up race war in America. He goes to uh, New Orleans and the anniversary of Katrina. Right away, I'm ready, the minority story again. This is after this minority went in a loony, a loony, loony bin minority, shot up two and killed white people because of alleged racism. He, this is the president back from vacation with the billionaires, goes to New Orleans and right away start already with the race and this and the people don't have an opportunity and then they don't stop. No, they don't stop. It's Rock and Roll Friday. Michael Savage newsletter from this week. We must reopen the mental hospitals to deal with the homeless. We are, by the way, please keep your seatbelts on. We have not yet attained cruising altitude on the Savage Nation. We're going to give it about 30 minutes to attain 45,000 feet because after yesterday, I am so glad you didn't take your seatbelts off. <laughs> we crashed in hour one. Nothing to do with anyone. No one failed us. The Internet was down across many areas of America. We don't know why. Hacking, Russians, Chinese, what do I know? We don't know. Northeast, looked like a, a red zone went over it. And so I had to run up to another studio. Hours two and three were a dream. 45,000 feet, 500 miles an hour, 470 miles an hour, Mach 8. That's about Mach 9, I think. I'd like to fly at Mach 1.9 from here to New York next time. Well, that would be the, uh, the, the Concorde used to do that. It went from New York to uh, London in, in, what, three hours? And they eliminated it because it was too good. It was eliminated because it made too much noise. You hear the jet plane made too much noise. Okay. What should it fly on? Rubber bands? I'm, you could see I'm delaying. I'm just delaying to see if the show is, run, is, run, is running. So let me start with some of the news that I pulled. If you think I'm just delaying for delay's sake, you're wrong. The real media machine be try, be, the the real media machine behind Trump, conservative talk radio says BuzzFeed. Now it sounds like they're thanking us, but they're not. They're spanking us. Who Rosie Gray is, we don't know. I don't know Rosie Gray from Rosie O'Donnell, but we know Rosie O'Donnell hates Trump. So I can only assume that her her distant cousin Rosie Gray also hates Trump. So BuzzFeed, which is a left wing uh, hit or I don't know what it is really, and I heard of it, I don't know what it does, it says the real media machine behind Trump is conservative talk radio. And the article opens like this, it says, I'm for Trump, conservative talk radio host Michael Savage told listeners last month, point blank, best choice we have. Right now, the lead video on the radio host's YouTube channel is a, quote, exciting, musty compilation set to music of Trump moments from this summer. I didn't put that together. Ryan, will you check and see if that's true? I didn't. I don't make the YouTubes. Who would have made that? So then they go on and says the symbiotic relationship between Donald Trump and cable news is well established. But what's gotten less attention this summer, beyond frustrated conservative circles online, is th another media engine driving Trump. Good old-fashioned talk radio. For weeks, some of the biggest names in conservative talk radio, like Michael Savage, have praised Trump and his bashing of the politically correct left and Republican establishment. But the conservative talkers are also pushing his rhetoric on immigration and his vow to evoke, to revoke birthright citizenship for the children of undocumented immigrants and delivering the content straight to their millions of listeners. Well, let me straighten you out, Rosie. I don't know when you were born. You were probably born after 1994 when I started the radio. Uh, but my first book covered this subject, published in 1995. And that's my first political book, Rosie. 
I wrote many books before that, Rosie, in the field of health. But the fact of the matter is, we're not pushing Trump's rhetoric on immigration. Trump is pushing America's rhetoric on immigration, Rosie. You see, again, they're doing a propaganda piece here. And they're trying to say that we're, we're doing this just for ratings. Now, we really don't believe it, no. They're the only ones who believe anything. Only the left believes in their agenda. We on the conservative side, we don't believe in anything we say. It's just, just for uh, ratings. That's all it is. That's all it is. Rick Wilson, an unknown hack, a so-called Republican strategist. I never heard of him. No one knows who he is. He probably makes $14,000 a year and has to sub uh, in McDonald's somewhere. But that would make him a Republican strategist who has come under attack from fellow conservatives? Why does she lump the word Republican with conservative together when they're not one and the same thing? Again, propaganda. He said that he thought conservative talk radio's focus on Trump is a ploy to please listeners and keep them tuned in. The conservative media is more crowded than ever with sources of information. And though they still command large audiences, talkers don't have the same kind of hegemony they once did. All right, you get the picture. We don't really mean it. Only the left is uh, sincere, and Trump is in, has invented the whole issue of illegal, a, 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 illegal immigration. Then, I'm not going to read the whole article. It says, Trump's embrace of hardline immigration ideas like ending birthright citizenship matches up perfectly with the policies that some of these hosts have been promoting for some time. Okay, good. So at least she gives credit where credit is due. Then he names two unknown talk show hosts who have seized on a quote by Senator Jacob Howard the original sponsor of the citizenship clause that they're using to bolster their case that the 14th Amendment doesn't guarantee citizenship to the children of people in the country illegally. Uh, excuse me, the two unknown hosts got it from me because if you remember, I read it to you straight out in New York. Remember when I was in New York? I hadn't heard it anyone from anyone before. Okay, so the copycats got it from me and now they're saying they invented it. It doesn't matter. The point is, the original senator who wrote the clause said it was never meant to grant citizenship to foreigners in plain English. Come on. Whatever. And that's that story. Now we can move on, dot me. Uh, we're now at 38,000 feet, still attaining altitude. We are flying at 380 miles an hour at 38,000 feet, but we're still approaching cruising altitude. So please do not take off your seatbelts yet on the Savage Nation. Uh, we cannot yet serve you drinks. Only we in the pilot's compartment can drink. And I'm drinking some water right now. The phone number here, if you want to join the conversation, which hasn't yet started, is not up on my board, so I forgot the number. I think it's 8554. I don't know the number. The board up has to put my number up somewhere. I have it somewhere. Yeah, I, I know. Don't read it to me. Don't interrupt my brain. 855-400-SAVAGE. There it is. That's one rule of talk radio. Nobody is ever to talk to us while we're on the air unless... You don't understand what this business is like. When we're talking, if someone talks to us, it throws the whole show off for about 20 minutes. Our heads need total calmness. 855-407-282 is the phone number. Uh, we must reopen the mental hospitals to deal with the homeless. Now, for three days, I have been talking about the sad disgrace of the city I love so much, San Francisco. I am talking about the corruption the outright robbery of the billions of dollars in federal and state grants. I am talking mainly about the filth and the bums in the streets. I'm talking about the aggressive bums in the streets. I'm talking about bums defecating in the streets. I'm talking about bums urinating in the streets. I'm talking about tourists are saying it. I'm saying that they don't want me to talk about it. I've been told that the city fathers or the transgenders who run it, I don't know who, the transgenders who run the city do not want me talking about the bums in the streets. But even transgenders are assaulted by them. They don't like stepping on fecal matter. Nobody likes it, but nobody will stop this. And that's why I've been talking about opening up the mental hospitals. Now I want to move on to another topic. Jim, open up some lines to this topic because I, I need to get this topic out there before I take my first break. I saw an article this morning. Many neurotics are more likely to be creative geniuses, study says. Uh, if you are a tense and moody neurotic, take heart. You could also be a creative genius as a new study backs up the belief that neurotic misery and imagination go hand in hand. It could explain why so many original thinkers, such as the famously neurotic artist Vincent van Gogh, I don't know why she links Woody Allen and with Sir Isaac Newton, already the article has, the, already the article's uh, trash, trash it. She links this pervert Woody Allen in with 
Vincent Van Gogh and Isaac Newton. You hear this? Already the study is flawed. But the point is, is that they were neurotic. They suffered for their art. And what she says is a new study says what such individuals have in common is a brain more sensitive to perceived threats than those of other people. And that panic button tendency is closely linked to an overactive, threat-generating imagination, say psychologists. Okay, the personality expert, Dr. Adam Perkins, okay, some expert, from King's College London said, we're still a long way off from fully explaining neuroticism. Neuroticism? Neuroticism? Neuroticism. I like the last part of that word. But we hope our new theory will help people make sense of their own experiences and show that although being highly neurotic is by definition unpleasant, it also has creative benefits. Let me explain something to you. As a highly creative man myself, someone who has been writing since I'm a young boy, someone who has been drawing since I'm a young boy, someone who has published numerous books and has many unpublished plays and stories and poems, someone who has been writing and working all my life in the creative world, they're 100% wrong. Let me explain this, and I'll have to explain it in a little more detail, but I'm going to give you the short version now, the, 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 the Savage Notes version. I remember when I was 18 years old, and I was very worried about my highly sensitive brain and highly sensitive nature, and how high I was flying with it and how close I got to the sun. I got very worried, and I, I stumbled upon something. I don't know whether it was uh, Aldous Huxley who wrote it, who wrote that we function, or we, so, sorry, we create despite our neurosis, not because of our neurosis. This is the exact opposite of the truth. Because if you want to feed into your highly creative nature and say, well, it's because I'm highly nervous, highly neurotic, whatever you want to call it, that I can create, what you will do is you will fuel that neuroticism, coffee, cigarettes, drugs, alcohol, uh, sexual addiction, in order to, th th thinking that you're going to make yourself more creative. It's the exact opposite of the truth. What I read that saved me, and I'm telling this to all the young people out there who think that by being wild and crazy, you're going to create more. No, you're going to kill yourself, and your creativity will come to gibberish. The opposite is true. We create despite our neuroticism, not because of it. There, that's Dr. Savage's lecture for the day, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I don't know if I'm not in the mood. I'm not, I'm not really happy listening to that. So let's knock it off. It's Rock and Roll Friday, but we'll have to pick better songs. I don't know. I haven't had a time to think about it. So we're doing the news. I see an article that moody neurotics are more likely to be creative geniuses, and I say the opposite is true. And the study says that that's why Van Gogh and Isaac Newton suffer for their art, because they have brains that are more sensitive to perceived threats than those of other people, and that that panic button tendency is closely linked to an overactive threat-generating imagination, say, psychologists. I think the exact opposite is true. As one of the most creative people in the United States of America, which I am, whether or not people agree with it, is, is highly irrelevant. The body of work speaks for itself. And I don't have to sell myself to you. I know what I have done, and I know what I have, and I also know what's going to be coming out over the next few years, some maybe even after I'm not here. And so the thing is, the opposite is true. They say support for the idea that neuroticism is associated with creativity has come from brain scan studies highlighting neural circuits that re regulate self-generated thought. So that sounds very serious, right? It says a panic button in the amygdala, a key emotional center in the brain, is believed to trigger an inappropriate fear response after perceived threats are conjured up in the brain's uh, pre prefrontal cortex. High scorers on neuroticism have a highly active imagination which acts as a built-in threat generator says Dr. Perkins. Now, as I said to you, it's very attractive to believe this, but I think the exact opposite could be, could be derived from, the exact opposite conclusion could be derived from the same observations because, as uh, I think it was Huxley, pretty sure Aldous Huxley wrote it, uh, or it could have been Laura Archera Huxley, his, his wife, wrote it, that highly creative people function despite